Hello there. And did you all have a good Christmas? <laughs> oh, I am so glad to hear that. And me, you ask? Oh, well, I'm fed up with the cold and damp of our English weather. So as my first trip of the new year, I'm going down under to the much warmer climate of Australia. And it's going to be a flight between Kalgoorlie, that's a town known as the Wild West of Australia, and Perth, which is the capital of Western Australia. <laughs> Here's a satellite view of the area. Not too far as flying distances go, but the cultural distance was much greater back in the early 1900s. In those days, Perth boasted trams, motor cars, an opera house, a ballet company, and of course, beautiful golden beaches. While Kalgoorlie was known for its Wild West gambling and its very popular Hay Street brothel district. <laughs> but most of all, it was famous for its gold. In June of 1893, a fellow by the name of Paddy Hannan, along with Thomas Flanagan and Dan Shea, found close to 100 ounces of alluvial gold near Mount Charlotte, which is a short distance from what is now the city of Kalgoorlie, Boulder. This find sparked the Western Australian Gold Rush and in a, unearthed one of the richest gold fields in the world, the famous Golden Mile. By 1903, the Golden Mile was home to 49 operating mines, 88 roasters, 100 head frames, and more than 3,500 kilometers of underground development. Kalgoorlie, the name given in, in 1894 to the town that grew up there, is a corruption of the Aboriginal world Galgoorlie, meaning silky pear, a local plant also called the bush banana. This is what it looks like. For nearly 100 years, Small individual operations worked and controlled the Golden Mile. Today, all the mining is done by a big consortium, and it is the fifth largest producer of gold in the world. Annual production is in the region of 800 ounces of pure gold every year or nearly 23 tons of gold. This is a picture of one of the trucks they use to carry the ore. Hmm. Somehow I don't think that would fit under my carport. Mm. What do you think? Since its discovery, the Golden Mile has produced more than 58 million ounces of gold, making it the fifth largest gold producing region in the world. And at 3.5 kilometers long, 1.5 kilometers wide, and more than 600 meters deep, the super pit can be seen from space. Here's a picture of that super pit. And right here, this is the airport we will be starting out from. Now I'm here today as the guest of Paul Lucas, a sim enthusiast and resident of Perth who has invited me to make the flight between these two points of great interest. 
YPKG, which is Calgary Boulder, to YPPH Perth. So thank you, Paul, for the invitation, and I hope you'll like the flight. And especially for you, I'm going to make sure that we have a few cases of those silky pears on board, along with some of that great down under beer. <laughs> Now, I've not been to Calgary Boulder before, but I have been to Perth a couple of times. So this is going to be an interesting flight. I did a little research and I found that Qantas does the flight between the two points. So I'm going to follow Qantas flight 1201 or QF1201 if you want to look it up. Qantas flies between these two points every day, so there's lots of historical flights available. Now, I managed to find some excellent scenery for YPPH Perth Airport, and it was created by a company called MFSG. I wasn't able to find any scenery at all for YPKG Kalgoorlie, I did see some old scenery, but it was all for FSX and I did try it and it doesn't work in my system. So I am having to use the default P3D scenery. Now, unfortunately, in that scenery, there is only one parking stand. So that's where I'm going to begin from. So if you're ready, then let's pop into pre-flight and make ourselves a plan, shall we? Are you ready, Paul? See you in pre-flight. Well, here we are in Flight Aware, and I'm having a look at an old flight of Qantas 1201. Here you can see the uh, the other designations, QF1201 right here. Now this one arrived at gate 16 in Perth, but doesn't show what gate or stand it left from. Having a look at the flight route, There it is, there's Kalgoorlie and here's Perth. So it looks like, and I've looked at several of these, and it comes in on this route each time. The only thing that changes, of course, is the altitude, and that's dependent on the weather. This particular one, if we have a look here, this was at 34,000 feet, so we may get the same. Don't know. We'll have to have a look. Taxi time at Kalgoorlie was six minutes and only one minute when it arrived in Perth. So that must be one of those stands very close to the runway. Now, looking down here, this is something else that was rather useful. They actually post the route so that it would be easy to copy and paste this should it be necessary. And the Qantas uh, aircraft, in this case, is a Boeing 737-800, which is exactly the same as Ryanair. All right, let's go to Wendy and have a look at YPKG. And here it is. You can see the, the wind moving quite strongly over there. According to this, the wind is 280 degrees, 16 knots, gusting to 27. So that's, <laughs> that is some stiff wind out there. No clouds. So absolutely clear. Temperature 38 degrees. Oh, wow. I could wish that we had that in England right now. <laughs> and Q&H 1000. So there is a little bit of low pressure over the area. 
Here's the other part. It is VFR. So having a look here now at the runways, we'll be using this main runway here. So it looks like we will be taking off from down here. And which means we'll probably have to do go taxi down the runway and backtrack in order to do the takeoff. We will be parked somewhere here. This is where we'll be parked, is in this particular area right there. So, all right, let's have a look at Windy for our destination. Here's Perth. Wind is coming off the sea coast, blowing straight in. 250 degrees, 16 knots. Again, a good stiff wind. Visibility, 10 kilometers. Clouds scattered at 3,200 feet, broken 5,100. So we'll have a little cloud going down in our descent. Q&H 1008. And again, it is VFR. Here are the runways. Now, which one we will be using, I don't know. But, according to what I was able to find out, Stand 16 is in this section right here. So whether that means it'll be a landing on this runway here, don't know. We shall have to see. We'll have to see exactly what uh, ATC gives us. All right, let's go into Simbrief and see what we can find out. All right, we are Ryanair. We are 186. We are departing from YPKG. And we're going to go to YPPH. And there's the alternate. We'll have a look at that alternate, see where it is in just a moment. Our airframe, we put that in and then Simbrief is able to calculate all the weight and the balance and the fuel burn and rate and everything else. Our pro cruise profile is six. There's our registration right here. And it's calling for a departure runway 29, which is pretty much what we thought, and an arrival at 24. Well, well, we'll see if that still holds when we get there. Auto, we are full for passengers. Full for passengers. We have one ton of cargo, some of that wonderful Aussie wild fruit, and of course, several cases of beer, along with the champagne and caviar. I'll leave the altitude as auto to see what it comes up with. Now here's the information that it's got. And if we have a look at this, This looks to be exactly the route that we saw on the flight aware. And down here, it looks like this is our alternate. So, not far to go should there should things turn pear shape when we're coming into land. All right, we'll accept this. Go back up, we'll save the flight and we'll ask it to generate the flight and see what we get for 
cruise altitude and all the rest. Ah, well, we've been given a cruise altitude of 30,000 feet. Airtime, one hour, five minutes. Block fuel is right here. No extra fuel. And it says this is the planned optimum flight level for our configuration. So we can accept that. And there it is. There's the, there's the route. So let's go down now and have a look at the other information we're going to need. Here, of course, is our designation. Here is the flight level that we've been assigned. And here is the routing. We're going to need to know that it's cost index six. We're going to need to know the average wind to put that in the information. We'll need to make sure that we have the fuel loaded that we're going to require. There's our reserves. There's the trip and the taxi. No tankering is recommended. And this is the full route for the entire trip. Now this I'll post on YouTube in the description box so you will be able to pick this up and follow this yourselves. And then down here we need to have a look at the wind and the wind speed. Oh, there's some interesting wind speeds there. Look at this, 79 knots at flight level 200. There's some stiff wind out there. And 59 knots up there and 10,000 feet, 36 knots. So it's pretty stiff wind that we're going to be facing. All right. There's all the information, no TAMs and everything else. Uh, nothing particularly standing out on no TAMs. So let's go down and have a look at the weather. Now here you can see that there's a little bit of a front right here and we're going to be flying directly in between these two frontal movements. Here's the wind at flight level 240, crosswinds pretty much all the way. And this is at our flight route. This is at our altitude. And you can see here we do have some very stiff crosswinds. And when we get down to this point, it's going to be headwinds going in here. And this will be quartering off our front right quarter as we're going down. So we're going to have some stiff breezes on our run. Right here is the vertical profile. Here we take off YPKG, top of climb all the way across here and then down into Perth. This dotted line, in case you are wondering what that is, that's the troposphere. And we won't be going anywhere near that on this particular trip. But you can see by these thick uh, little tails on these arrow directions, that we are going to be facing some very stiff wind. Right, so now we know what we're facing. Let's go on into Navigraph charts. Well, here we are in Navigraph charts. So let's click on flights, add new flight and go from Simbrief. And there's the one we just made. First thing we need to do is click on YPKG, open the charts list. We need the airport, and here's the airport plate. 
We're also going to need the parking stands and coordinates and we'll pin that one also to the bottom. We are actually going to be parked right here at stand five. The thing about the uh, freeware scenery that I've got is it actually puts us at stand two. So there's a lot of uh, debate about that, but physically we are going to be right there at stand five. Looking at SIDS, well, there are no SIDS for Kalgoorlie. So that is all we need for there. Now over here, we need to open the charts list. We're going to need the airport info and more importantly, we're going to need to know the parking stands for this area. I'm going to pin that one to the bottom too. And the reason is when I looked at all of the historical flights for the Kalgoorlie to Perth, they all come in at Terminal 3 between Stand 16 and 19 or somewhere in this vicinity. They always come in at one of these. So we're going to do the same. We'll come in at Terminal 3 and we'll park at one of these stands, whichever one's available. And it says here we're coming in at Runway 24, so we need to bring in our approach and there it is ILS Zulu will pin that one and if we look at the overlay on this there's the runway coming in and it looks like we make our straight in approach right into runway 24. Okay, and I talked with Paul about this and he says, since he lives in Perth, he says that uh, runway 24 may be assigned to us, but it's also the shortest runway. It says most of the time, the runway that's in use is this one, is actually going to be 2-1. So I'm going to pin that one just in case. It's always good to have a backup. And for stars, we will be using the Beverly 5A. So let's pin it and let's have a look at that. Well, there we are. There's the approach, the Beverly approach. So it comes up and then comes in to 2-4 that way, or if we're routed to 2-1, then we come in on that one. So looking at the approaches, we're going to be looking at from Belva 5 Alpha and coming in on presumably the ILS runway 2-4, and on final. And there it is. It joins it up very nicely right there to come right into the final. Should we get instructed by ATC to go on to 2-1? Well, we can just simply click on it and make the change very quickly. All right, we are now set up and ready to go. We've got our whole route right there. Everything is there. So what do you say that uh, you hop on board, Paul? <laughs> Did you like that? Uh -huh. Okay, I know, terrible, terrible for down under with all those kangaroos hopping about. But anyway, I'm going to hop on board and I'm inviting you to hop on board with me. <laughs> Ah, uh, there you are, Paul. You hopped on board after all. <laughs> Sorry, bad joke, I know, but I couldn't resist it. Devil made me do it, you know. <laughs> anyway, 
Here we are, we're at stand five according to the uh, Jefferson charts. According to the freeware scenery that I have for this particular uh, airport, we're at stand two. <laughs> so if you were to use this freeware scenery, put in two and it brings you to actually to stand five. Don't understand it, but that's where it is. I managed to find a little bit of scenery that just gave me the airport and airport stands. So I managed to get that in and it works. There are a couple of little glitches. For instance, looking over here to the right, you can see where the taxiway is going down to the main runway. And of course, the tarmac ends right here. It doesn't actually, but it's just a little glitch. So we'll be having to go down there to get to the active runway. And which direction we're going to go, it doesn't, we don't know yet until ATC tells us. So I thought I'd let you know that. But buckle up. Welcome aboard Ryanair 186. I'm glad to be able to get you on board at long last. You've waited a while for this particular flight. We're flying from Kalgoorlie all the way to your hometown in Perth, Australia. And it is warmer here than it is in England. It was a frosty start to the day here in England, but down under, it's a civilized temperature, don't you think? Good. All right, I've got the fuel on board. The passengers are being sorted out. And so it's time to get ourselves started. So we turn on the battery. We make sure that we've got enough voltage right here. And then go ahead and turn on the fuel pumps, and let's start the APU. Now, I did get a message from one person who looks at the channel. He said, I should do the fire check before starting the APU. And of course, he's absolutely correct. Unfortunately, I don't have a fire module on my simulator here. I can't afford it, not yet anyway. So you'll have to just forgive me and presume that I've already done that um, and let it go at that. So it's just that I don't have the module yet, so I can't actually physically go through and check that. All right, the engine gas temperature has risen. Now it's dropping back down as soon as this blue light comes on. Ah, there it is. We now have 115 volts going into our system. So the next thing we need to do is we need to turn on the IRS to look, get ourselves located with GPS. Then we turn on the galley. <laughs> Always hoping for a cup of tea, you know. Emergency exit lights, no smoking, fasten seat belts, and no, no, nobody ever comes. You can't get the staff pole, you really can't. Oh well. And then over here, we're going to turn on the left and the right window heat. I'm going to turn on the probes. I know you shouldn't do that until later, but I do it now anyway. Old habit. And then turn on the hydraulic pumps. Here you can see the forward service hatch is open. The equipment light is on, which means the stairs are down. And then over here, I'm going to turn on the APU bleed. And that's going to start the compressor to send through heat into the cabin. Or, as we need it here in Australia, we need air conditioning. So let's do that. Turn on these. 
And listen. There's that rush of air going through that's warming up or cooling down the cabin. And then the other thing I'm going to do is turn on the steady light so the ground crew knows that we are in here and we're doing our thing. Right, so far so good. Making sure that everything is looking fine, looking good. All right. So, now that we've got that and our passengers, our self-loading cargo, are getting themselves on board and just do that next thing we need to do we need to program the FMC so let's go down here clear the screen and go to FMC position initialize and then we need to put in our starting point which is YPKG so YPKG we are technically at stand 5 but I don't know whether or not the database is going to be in this I can put it in let's see if it comes up well to check this what we need to do now is look at the parking stand chart and it says that for stand 5, it should be 30.47.2, 30.47.2, and 121.27.4, 121.27.4, which is correct. So I'll put that into the temporary, and now we have our GPS set. Now I'm going to go to the route, so we are YPKG. Our destination is YPPH. We are flight number Ryanair, so that's RYR, and we're number 186. Go down to next page, and let's put in the information for our route. We go, first of all, direct to NALAR, N-A-L-A-R. So N A L A R. Then we take the Quebec 41, Quebec 41, and then we go to Hampton, H A M T N. And then we take the Quebec 158. Quebec 158 and we go to Beverly so B-E-V-L-Y and that's it activate execute we're done on that now we'll go to the fix and our fix of course is Perth so that's Y-P-P-H we need a 4 mile circle, we need a 10 mile circle, and we need a 30 mile circle. The 30 mile circle on the simulator, that's as far as, far as P3D is concerned. We need to be 30 miles or less in order to be able to contact the tower of the destination airport. Now we'll go into descent and go to forecast. Now, we need to take note here, the transition level, as you can see on this chart, is flight level 110, so 110, that's the flight, the transition level, not the transition altitude, which we'll put in a little bit later. Now we need to put in the values 200 for a flight level 200, flight level 150 and flight level 100. The Q&H at our destination is 1012 pretty much standard and then the information for our 
descent. The winds are 30579, 305 at 79. And at 150 it's 298 at 59, 298 59. And at 100 it is 276 36. 276 and 36. Some pretty fast winds there aloft. Execute that. Now we'll go into departure and let's find out which runway we're actually going to be departing from. Kalgoorlie Boulder, ground, Ryanair 186, ready to taxi west, departure. Ryanair 186, taxi to and hold short at one way, one, one, via taxiway, Bravo, contact tower on, one, two, six, point six, when ready. Taxi, hold short, one way, one, one, via taxiway, Bravo, Ryanair 186. Well, we're going to be leaving from runway 11, different from what the uh, sim brief said, but that's okay. That means we go down there and we hang a right and then take off in that direction. So we'll put in runway 11. There are no SIDs, so we'll just execute that. Departures and arrivals. Now, I'm looking here at the weather chart for Active Sky and it says that the runway in use is 21 and not 24. So I'm going to go ahead and do ILS Zulu 21 and it is the Beverly 5 Alpha 21 right there. Okay, now we'll go into legs. We'll click it over to plan. So I'm going to step through this and look to see where we're going. And it's bringing us all the way in, directly into the runway. We have a good flight plan. So I'll flip that back and put this on here. Now I'm going to put the weather radar on for myself. Data. Can I put the terrain on for you? Okay. And there's data on that. I'm now going to turn on the TCAS in case there's any wild traffic floating around here. Okay, now that we've got the route in, uh, we're now going to go to and perform the initialization. Now our plan fuel, we have 2,913 kilograms of reserve, which would be 2.9, and the trip is 3,262, makes 6,175 comes close enough to 6.2 so I'll put 6.2 and then as I said it was 2.9 for the reserves double click that and it makes the calculation cost index is 6 our cruise altitude is 300 the cruise wind is 302 at 82 so 302 at 82 82 knots that is a strong crosswind now the transition altitude here in this part of australia is 10,000 feet and execute that n1 limit Oh, 27 degrees here. Oh, yes, I'll take 27 degrees. Oh, yes, it was zero degrees this morning in England. Frosty. 27 degrees? Yes, I'll love that. Take off. We are flaps 10. Double click that to calculate the center of gravity, and that's what we put onto the trim. I click on each of those, and it tells us the V1, the rotate, and lift off at 145. Right, so now we're ready to put the information in. So first of all, up here, we'll put in 30,000 feet for our cruising altitude. This is for pressurization. The 
uh, elevation of the airport in Perth is 67 feet. So I'm going to put a landing altitude of 50 in there because these are in multiples of 50 and 50 is the closest. Next I'm going to put in the altitude here on the MCP. I'm just going to make the presumption that we are 30,000 feet all the way. Now, if we're departing runway 11, then we need to do 110 degrees for our course, for our departure. And I'll put 110 degrees in here for you. Is that all right, Paul? Okay. And there it is, 110. And I'll put our 110 degrees in here for our departure. There we go. The max speed is 145. There we go. And so we've got that in. Now I'm going to turn on the flight director on my side and then on your side. Click the VNAV, click the LNAV. We have a good flight plan. So now I'm going to arm the throttle, put in the VOR. Uh, one on both of our sides and then I'm going to turn on the your damper so the flight continuity light goes off okay so far so good we have a good good procedure right now yeah so everything is checking out our passengers are all on, being settled down, so we'll bring up the stairs and close the hatch. We need to check and make sure that these lights go out. Uh, you can see the electric stairs, that's what you can hear there. The hatch is closed. And the equipment light has gone out. So we are set. And go to RTO. Right, we're ready now to make our start. But before we do that, let's do the check. Fuel is on, is correct. Windows locked both. Yes, seatbelt signs are all on. Door lights are all out. Correct. MCP is programmed and good thrust and takeoff speed v1 are all correct cdu pre-flight is completed rudder air along trim is corrected taxi takeoff briefing well we'll do that now we're going to go down there on this taxiway we're going to go to the active runway and then we go to the end of the runway make a turn and then take off in that direction Anti-collision light is now on. Okay. So that's ready and we're ready now for start. When we depart, because we have baggage equipment here, we're going to need to reverse straight and then we can go around them to get down to the active. So, which engine would you like to start first, Paul? Would you like to do number one, number two, one, two? What's your preference? Oh, engine number one, good choice. All right, engine number one. I'm going to switch then this to generator one. And I'm going to get ready to do this in just a moment. But let's get the... Push back people, we're going to go straight out. And there we are. Are you ready? Everything set? You all buckled up? Good. Here we go then. Cockpit to ground. Go ahead. We've been cleared for pushback and start tail straight out. Roger that. Ready for push straight back. Release the brakes, please. Brakes released. 
air conditioning is now being turned off in order to give all the uh, power to the compressors to turn the engines and we'll start engine number one as soon as we start to move back Actually, here we go all right switching to engine start one and here you can see the start valve has opened it's starting to spin up and we're looking at the N2 spinning up when it gets to 24 there we go I'm bringing in the fuel to engine number one we should hear the engine firing up any moment there we go there we go, we have ignition. And checking up here, we're looking for 150 volts, there it is. Switching to engine number two and starting. Push back complete, parking brake set. Parking brake is set. Brake set. very much and we have well we've got other baggage things here well we'll just go around it will be the kamikazes for today and the N2 the engine start valve has opened the low pressure has gone off we're making a good turn a good spin there's the ignition and we have 115 volts. Now when that little red tick goes off, it did, we now have consistent generating power. So now I'm gonna switch to the main engines. I'm gonna turn the air conditioning back on, turn off the APU bleed, and turn off the APU. Next I'm gonna turn on the three taxi lights right here. And I'm going to position strobe and nav up there. I'm going to go to flaps 10. It's asking me to verify the takeoff speeds and I need to make one adjustment there. Okay, we are now all set. Right, after start, generators are on, good, check, pro key is on, anti-ice, I don't think is required today. Isolation valves are closed, engine start levers are detent, flight door is closed, recall is check, flaps 10 and green light, stabilizer trim is correct, auto brake RTO, speed brake lever down the, um, is the tent, ground equipment, well, it looks like most of it is clear, so we'll just do the best that we can. <coughs> right, are you ready? Then let's go. Brake is off. And I'm going to apply a little bit of power here to get ourselves going and spin out so that I'm clear of all the baggage there it's very inconvenient having baggage uh, trucks parked right in our way what do you think shall we write to the chairman of the board well maybe we should Oh, here we go. This is actually a taxiway. I know it looks like grass, but that windsock is blowing in the wrong direction. Oh well. 
Now we're going to just go up here. So once we get to this point here, we'll go to the whole short line and then get our clearance to request our clearance. Ready for takeoff, departure to the west. Line air 186, clear for takeoff, runway 11. West departure approved. Cleared for takeoff, runway 11, line air 186. Right, we are ready to go. So I'm putting on all the lights, attendance, be secured. Now I'm going to taxi here to the turnaround point of runway 11. It doesn't look like there's a lot of space to turn around in there, so we'll just have to do the best we can. Okay, now I'm going to get this turn. So we're pointing down the center line. Up. Uh -huh. 
moment, but we're good for right now. All right, Paul, we're on our way. We made a nice smooth takeoff. I wasn't sure if we were actually going to have enough runway, but it turned out we did all right. We're on our way to your hometown of Perth. So, let's see how well we do it. The weather is looking good. We're going to climb above the bounce and the rough air in just a little bit. In the meantime, don't forget, I've got two pallets of beer back there. Especially for you, Paul because we cannot have a dry flight. We have to have a wet flight. We have to be good all the way. So why don't you go back into the cabin, let the cabin staff spoil you rotten, and I'll give you a buzz as soon as we're on our approach into Perth, okay? See you in a little bit. set for three but 
that no matter what's going to happen, it will be a crosswind landing. Just how bad? Well, we'll have to see that when we come to land. I also have the airport in sight. It is clear here, so we're doing all right. Right, we're slowing up a little bit now. We don't want to be going too fast. There are some speed restrictions here. Don't want to get a speeding ticket now, do we? <laughs>
into the glide slope.
and 2-4. Here we go, we're crossing the area, check and make sure there's nothing coming in or taking off, we're fine. And then we'll swing around and make our way up to Terminal 3. We still have 3.7 tons of fuel on board, so we do have plenty of fuel. We'll turn up here. Oh, these are high intensity markings here. Yeah, by the way, this this airport scenery is by MFSG and it really is detailed. It's a beautiful scenery. Very, very detailed. And we'll turn up here because there's Terminal 3. We'll find, if we can, we'll try to get in on 16, 1, 6, because that, when we were looking at the flights, the historic flights, it came in onto stand 16, so we'll try to find the same one if it's empty. This is stand 20, we're just coming up, now 19. And this is 18, so this part here, this is terminal 16, uh, terminal 3, and I can see 16 over there. So let's, this is 17, so we're turning on the next one. Let's see if I can do this without messing up, eh? And making the turn and then straightening out. And slowing down. And there we are. Brakes are on, APU is on, lights are off, engines shutting down, lights off, seatbelt signs are off, letting down the stairs and opening the, the door. Okay, shutting down now. IRS is off, your damper off, galley off, all lights are off, and probes off, electrical hydraulic pumps are off. TCAS is off, fuel pumps are off. APU is off, battery is off, shutdown is complete. Well, there you are, Paul. We made it. Vicious crosswind landing, though. A really, really vicious crosswind landing. I could really, I could feel that even in this. But we made a good, safe landing. We're here in Perth, your hometown. And, uh, by the way, just curious, did you leave any bottles of beer back there? You know, one for me, maybe, you know, poor little me, one or two? Okay, good. 
then we'll have a party as soon as we've got everybody off. We'll go and wobble into the terminal building and see if we can polish off the rest of the beer. How's that? And for everyone else, I hope that you enjoyed flying Ryanair 186 today. No gold from Kalgoorlie, but we have beautiful weather and excellent scenery. So, thank you, Paul. Thank you for inviting me to Down Under in Perth, Australia. Bye, everybody.